Hi, um, we are setting up a new audience and we thought that it'd be a really good opportunity for us to take you through the process of testing these video ads that we've learnt from our mentor, Laurel Portier. So from the beginning, um, if I'm doing something that's very, very specific, I will write a script because I would like it to follow a very, very specific format, which is a headline so it captures people's uh, attention and I can test properly. And we use something called a promise of value, which means that people have a reason to stay if it's for them, okay? And then we want to put in like what we call a humble brag, which is a self-introduction so you're highly referable, but also a call to action so people know what to do next if they're interested in getting in contact with you. Now, with these, we also put in something called um, a value bomb, which is like a lead magnet, but it's not, okay? But we'll go into that more in another time, okay? Because right now, I just wanted to show you how to set up these, what we call top of funnel. So this is um, a very good, I'm gonna say it's goodwill post, okay? And the idea is to attract the people who are interested in what we, um, but the problems we solve, and to push away anyone else, okay? Because the whole idea is for it to be polarizing so that we can actually build a warm audience of people who are already interested in what it is we do and the problems we can solve for them, okay? And that means we'll be able to retarget over and over again so that they get to know what it is we do and how we can help them. Okay, so the first video, We've created this yesterday, made a script. I've made it like this in a, in a row because I have a webcam, which I use for recording, and I use Loom, which is what I'm using right now to record this also. So I'm just gonna show you, I recorded this earlier. I, I test a few times. Um, I like to, if I'm reading through, I will record it on Loom anyway, because sometimes I get it perfect first time, depending on what's going on in my mind. Other times I'll have to, I will practice it a few times over the day and then choose one I like the best. Or I might do it twice and just know that I feel okay with that. So this has been recorded. I now have it in, in Loom where I recorded it to. And the next thing I'll do is I'll go to these three buttons here and I'll download the video. That will then go to my drive. Okay, I save everything in Google Drive. Now I'm sure if you if you work on your computer, you know about Google Drive, but if you get stuck with Google Drive, and not sure how to use it, please do give us a shout. We're very happy to walk people through these things. The next thing that will happen is I will let Tom know in WhatsApp, okay? I have WhatsApp on my desktop and I send him a little message saying, this is in, this is in the drive, or I might just send him the link if it's not finished. What Tom then does is he goes to our CapCut, um, account and he'll upload it to here. Now I've got two in here that I've recorded today. You can see one's much longer than the other. Both have the um, the name of the video in it so we know which one's which. And you see that it's all being named the same so we can keep track. So there's three of us working on these videos and our account and it's our business. So Tom would have gone in here and he would have, let me just move this out of the way. <laughs> it looks to get squashed at first. He would have gone in here and he would have added in captions by her. Captions in here. Ah, it's getting slow for us. Okay. And you just put, I just use auto captions and then I'll go through and adjust anything that came out like bananas and chocolate when it should have been sausages and ketchup or whatever. So once Tom's put the auto captions in, the way I know that they're in is so I can click on this and you can see it's all in here. And he'd go through and check. I will go through and double check because sometimes I don't like the way I've said things and I will um, adjust that because a lot of times I think, say things like wanna and cause instead of because and because isn't actually a really, really important word to use in your marketing. It's one of the strongest ones. When if you want to know more about the top five words, I'd recommend um, Jeb Blount for that. He's a very famous sales chappy for sales gravy. Anyway. I just go through, check it all. And then once that's as we want it, I'd also want to add what we call a banner or something that can capture attention, okay? And what I would do is I go to this text here and I find adding the heading is too big. If you add a heading, look, the writing is massive, okay? You can use this little undo button at the top if anything happens that you don't like. And I find that this particular one is the right size. So I'll go in and I use this 
And I'll generally put it up here, but you can see on this particular one, I've actually, oopsie daisy, good to show you that you can go back. I've actually written something there for people to read as a call to action. So I will probably put this on this side and I will work out a headline from my script. Okay, so I'll probably look in there and go, okay, what is something that could capture somebody's attention that is shorter than this that will stand out in my post when it turns up in the Facebook feed? And then I'll add enter here. And I'll probably make it smaller than it is. If you go to the T over here, you see this is the body text. Let me just have that headline. So you can see it goes like that. And I'm just moving the thing out of the way. Okay, and here, moving that way, you can actually add in what you want, it, what colours you want it to look like. Say, like, maybe you want it blue. No, I don't think that works. Maybe you want it dark blue. Oh, that looks a bit better. Okay, but I think it'd be better if it had a background. And you can play with all these things, just click on them. And then you can see what stands out. There's lots of funky things you can do. Over here, you've got things like animations for these things. Okay? And you can do combinations and in and out. To be quite honest, I try and keep it as um, basic as possible because we found the flashy things distract people. And with this particular type of video, which is going out to top of funnel, people who don't know me yet, we want them to actually sit and listen for at least 25% uh, of this to show that they're interested in what it is you do. Okay, so that's the first part. Um, I'm going to wait to see if Thomas finished my captions and then um, we'll come back and do the next part.